You will see it for all. Nationals Park, the Rockies opening up a four-game series here uh, against the Nats. This is a place, surprisingly, the Rockies have played very well in their history. More on that in a few moments. The Rockies at 6-7, looking to get the 500, and Washington sits at 6-6. Six and six. So, last couple of days, it's been a shuffle atop the top of the lineup to get more on the two individuals that reside there. Here's our Corey Sullivan. Sully? Yeah. You know, guys, we were checking in on Charlie Blackman, and he let me know that he's feeling better. Unfortunately, he's not going to be in the starting lineup, but it is better still day to day. Right now, the leadoff spot will be in the good hands of DJ LeMahieu, who fortunately yesterday got himself three knocks to get himself back into the lineup. And you know what else he does here? He absolutely rakes against the Washington Nationals. He has a 373 career batting average against the Washington Nationals. And you know what? It's not just base hits. He does absolute damage. He's got a 961 OPS against the Washington Nationals, which means, you know what? He loves hitting here at Nationals Park. He's got two home runs here at Nationals Park. He also has six doubles and three triples. So, guys, it looks like he's in really, really good hands right now at the leadoff spot. Yeah, Corey, uh, to add to what you mentioned, he's two for four, including a home run lifetime against Gio Gonzalez. And let's take a look. That Southwest batting order adjusted again. Third straight ball game that Charlie will not start. So DJ up top, then Chris Iannetta, who's got a high on base percentage, so he fits in that two spot. Nolan Trevor and the return to Washington of Ian Desmond. Last year he was on the DL when the Rockies came to D.C. Cargo, Pat Valeka, Gerardo Parra in the eighth spot, and Chad Bettis against, and I put this in air quotes uh, <laughs> for you, Huey, the number three starter for Washington, Gio Gonzalez. For most teams, he may be their opening day starter. Well, he's 1-0 with a 1-5-9, which is sixth in the National League right now. Uh, in his career, he's won 118 ball games and 277 starts. So Gio Gonzalez is a type of guy that could lead a rotation, but there's two other guys here by the name of Strasburg and Scherzer that locked down one and two, so he's backed off to the third spot. I think the key tonight for the Rockies is they, they have to get the ball up from, from Gio because he has been pitching down in the zone so effectively. His fastball is not overpowering. It's about 89 miles an hour, but watch out for the curveball and the changeup because those things are his money pitches. And the curveball, he'll open up counts about a third of the time with the curveball, especially to left-handed hitters. So he knows how to pitch, native of Florida, and his first offering of the ball game is on that outside corner right at 89, as Jeff described, for a strike on LeMayhew. The Rockies have played 32 games at Nationals Park. They are 20 and 12 here. They have the best winning percentage of any team at Nationals Park, including the team that calls it home. <laughs> That's a 625 percentage for the Rockies. And this is in the air to left field, fairly deep, and it is carrying out of the ballpark. How do you like that? Matt Adams, I thought he was deking us. I did too. A leadoff home run for DJ LeMay, who's making like Charlie <laughs> now, isn't he? He is, and Corey was just talking about DJ and what his numbers against Washington, but his slugging, his OPS. And how about that? He has his third home run of the season. Off the bat, you and I are sitting here watching this, thought he got it, but Matt Adams had played it like it was a routine fly ball in left field. Now remember though, Adams is more of an infielder, first base type than he is as an outfielder. What did I mention on the on the show just a moment ago? On the Subaru Supermo, we saw where that pitch was. It was belt high. He did not get it down, they got it elevated. That's what you're supposed to do. The league is hitting. 417 against his fastball right now. And the reason he has a 159 ERA is nobody's doing anything against his two off-speed pitches, the curveball and the changeup. But if you get him in the zone with the fastball, you can do damage as DJ just did. Great start, one nothing Colorado. Two and one now on Ionetta. So the other thing you do is hunt the fastball. Don't try to hit the off-speed. Don't try to hit the curveball or changeup. 
spotted that fastball and turned it over in a good spot. Two balls, two strikes. Gio's a little bit of a crossfire. He'll stand on the third base side, but when he lands with that front foot, he's more on the first base side. There's that curveball, and it's chopped foul. So everything's like a swinging gate where it'll come out and around, even to the right-handed batters. Wherever you need him to hit, whatever you need him to do, he'll just say, no problem. First career leadoff home run for LeMayhew. And now the count runs full. Three and two on Ionetta. Nolan's on deck. And a great eye. So Chris draws a walk behind the home run by LeMayhew, and that'll bring up Nolan. before the game I said you have a few texts last night <laughs> he said yeah a few <laughs> I mean are we talking a few hundred or a few thousand I don't know but you know he's fired up to be on the field right now again no word yet from New York he takes a strike on the outside edge Nolan's getting his hits he's hitting 311 a lot of hits to right as we've talked about the last couple of days. His home run came opening day. Down in Arizona. That's outside. Nolan in his career. Last year he hit 420 against left handers led the National League this year 421 and think about all the left handers that the Rockies have seen. They've seen left handers eight times in the last 13 games. Nolan drives this ball pretty well to right center field. Michael Taylor going back, still going back, and he makes the catch in front of Bryce Harper. Ionetta scoots back to first base. That was a high quality swing also. Trevor Story will be next. Let's take a look at the Nationals defensively. Michael Taylor is flanked by Matt Adams and Bryce Harper. And behind the plate, Matt Wieters is back active. He's been dealing with an oblique injury. Just came off the disabled list, the veteran catcher, the former all-star with the Baltimore Orioles. Rendon, Turner, Kendrick, and Zimmerman in a mostly veteran infield. We can call Trey Turner a veteran. Man. Story had a solid home stand. The Rockies didn't win as much as uh, they had hoped, naturally. Went two and four in the home stand, but every time he looked up, Trevor was on base. Yeah, it was nice to see Trevor. He's reached now in ten consecutive games because of that that home stand. He started to feel it when the Rockies were down in San Diego. Ah! On top of the strike zone, the Subaru strike zone, and this is where Gio Gonzalez becomes masterful. He's got you down in the count 0-2. Go curveball, change up, maybe even a fastball inside, get you off the plate. You can tell by Weeder's stance. He's a big man. Weeder's one of the biggest catchers in baseball. He's about six foot five. You can tell that was a fastball setup. Yeah. You know who that reminds me of? Lance Parrish. A big dude. Remember big Lance dude. Parrish? Yeah, sure. They are comparable in size. Just big, tall, thick guys behind the plate. And that was kind of the, the mold you wanted for a catcher. Now you can say, Weeders again, asked for the fastball, set up inside, one and two. Story in the cleanup spot, hitting above 300. Third career at bat against Gio Gonzalez. Look at challenging with that fastball. Thought they would throw one down to try to bounce him. Geo's won 80 ball games against just 53 losses in a Nationals uniform. And he gets on the gas and strikes him out with a fastball up and away. Never did. No. Chain speeds. Two outs. 
Ionetta remains at first, and listen to the crowd and Desmond's return. Either late arriving or not large, it's uh, a Thursday night in our nation's capital. But make no mistake, Ian Desmond was not only adored here, but universally respected. And that ball in the dirt, Weeders grabs it with his glove and will have no throw. So Chris Ionet on the dirt ball in a scoring position. Oh, the wild pitch. Weeders went after, but Chris with the Marvelous secondary lead was able to get to second base. And this is not something you have to anticipate. You can't say, well, it might be in the dirt. You got to assume that ball's going to be in the dirt. Not a particularly good job of blocking from Weeders where it hit. But nonetheless, Chris at second base in scoring position. Desi swings and fouls it off. A ball and a strike on Desmond, who has played in. 900 or played in 927 games in a Nationals uniform. The only guy to play in more, Ryan Zimmerman. And I know Desmond he, was the leader in that clubhouse. You might be thinking, well, wait, the Rockies came here last year, but remember, he was on the DL when the Rockies made the trip to Washington. So he hasn't played against him yet. This has popped up. Howie Kendrick going out. Harper coming in, and he misses it. Kendrick loses the baseball. Desmond in a second with a double. Or an error, we'll find out. Doesn't matter, the Rockies get a run out of it. I just kept waiting for Harper to it's call, call off. off Kendrick. I mean, that's baseball 101, the outfielder calling off the infield. I don't care if Howie Kendrick had been waving his arms. He says, I've got it, I've got it, but now he's in trouble, and he just whiffed on it. But Bryce Harper's right behind. He could easily call them off. Instead, but also now think about Chris Ionetta moving up on that wild pitch dirt ball. Huge, huge right? play. Right, see? The little things in the game. Dave Martinez, the first-year manager of Washington, now sees his team down two runs. Off the thumb of the glove of Kendrick on the Subaru Supermo. They have not officially scored it yet. I mean, at face value, you say, well, that's, that's an error the whole way. But if you, a lot of times, if you don't contact the baseball, they're not going to give you an error. Hey, they ruled it a base hit. Yep. So Desmond will take it. The Rockies have a 2-0 lead. Cargo now with a chance to drive in a run. They drove in a run yesterday. The first run of the game is the Rockies got five immediately following order being restored at Coors Field. And that's what you need to do. That, that's how you answer any sort of thing. Throw those runs up there. How about Desi now? That's 10 RBIs. He leads the ball club. Here's the 1-0. Outside, 2-0 and on cargo. And you're making Gio Gonzalez throw some extra pitches. Cargo is 5 for 18 on the homestand. A double, a triple, and two home runs. Good eye. Three and zero oh with Pat Faleka on deck. You know, and there's not a lot of wind. We're at the top of the stadium. No. That was strange and, you know, pretty clear skies above. Now, you have dust, which sometimes, Huey, you, you described this before. Sometimes it's, it's hard to see the baseball this time of day. Cargo swinging 3-0 gets jammed, and Trey Turner makes the catch. So the Rockies get a home run from D.J. LeMayhew and then a pop fly that's not caught. And the Rockies have a 2-0 advantage for Chad Bettis.
First time he's pitched at Nationals Park in a couple of years. We got to go back to his last start, August 28th of 2016 for Chad. And marvelous performance, seven innings, five hits, two runs, one walk, six strikeouts, and 105 pitches thrown for Chad. He's had some success against the Nationals, and especially, I should say, the National League East. He's, he's dealt. Great. Yeah, he's had great success against the NL East. Seven and one. Oh in his last 14 starts against the East, and the Rockies are 12-2. and two. With a 3.08 ERA during that time. Ball and a strike on Trey Turner, who can absolutely fly. That's cued off the end of the bat. One ball and two strikes. Turner last year played in only 98 games. He had his wrist broken when he was hit by a pitch. He still stole 46 bases <laughs> in only 98 games. And that had a lot of sink on it. That was a changeup, and Turner's gone one out. And for Chad to be successful tonight, he is going to have to incorporate all four of his pitches, the fastball, changeup, curveball, slider. This is a potent lineup. That's guys that have a lot of years underneath their belt. Anthony Rendon is the hitter. He's off to a good start. He had a great year last year. He takes a fastball that looked like it was in the zone, but wasn't. May have surprised a little bit Chris Ionetta. This the way he caught high. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Chris will tell you afterward, he didn't receive that superbly like he typically does. 1 0. And there's <laughs> one at the top of the zone. Kind of caught that in the same way. Rendon, Rendon last year finished sixth in the National League MVP voting. That's how great a season he had. So many guys for Washington had big years. Ryan Zimmerman. You know, Bryce Harper was hurt at times last year, but you know, Harper does his thing. Well, you have a, to have a, a bunch of guys. Club. Yeah, ha have to have a bunch of guys do that when you win 97 games. Like Washington did last year. Well, the problem for the Nats is not winning regular season games. They <laughs> won the division by 20 games. They've been over 95 for the last half dozen years. That's caused a couple of victories, but they have not gotten out of the divisional round of the playoffs yet. Well, it's caused a couple of managers to be fired because of it. Yeah, I was shocked by that one. Dusty Baker, two years, they won, what, 96, 97, yes. or 95 and 97, whatever it was with Dusty. And they lost two game fives, rubber right, games, right. in the divisional series. And they ousted Dusty Baker. Rendon lines this ball to left field. And Parr is there. He makes the catch. Two outs. Let's take a look at the Southwest batting order this evening for Dave Martinez. Bryce Harper's coming next. He's off to a fabulous start. He has six home runs. Then Zimmerman, Adams, the veteran Howie Kendrick. Longtime Angel, Matt Wieters. They hit Gio Gonzalez in the eighth spot tonight. Michael Taylor, another guy with the real good speed. He'll bat ninth. That's a Joe Madden special. Even though Davey Martinez is managing, that comes from being under Joe's tutelage for so many years. Well, after a 16-year playing career, Dave Martinez has been the right-hand guy, as you said, for your old friend Joe Madden for a number of years, not just in Chicago, but prior to that Tampa. in Tampa, he was the bench coach also. Great guy. Davey and I played together in 1988 and 1989 in Montreal. That's on the corner to Harper, one and one. I actually, uh, I actually remember that. Yeah, and also Dave and Bud Black were teammates with San Francisco for three years. Well, when you're like Buddy and Dave, you played <laughs> a long time. You had a lot of teammates. Here's the 1-1. Boy, that 
had the floor drop out on him. Bettis has a really good changeup yeah, going tonight. That's good to see. And then for a pitcher, when they come out, they feel like sometimes they have it in the bullpen, and when they get out to the mound, they don't have it. Well, I'm sure Chad thought he had it in the bullpen, and it's working when he goes and takes a regular mound. 1-2 on Harper. And he goes with another changeup. That may have been a fastball, actually. But it had changeup movement. It had heavy two-seam movement, didn't it? Yes. Harper leading the National League in slugging percentage right now at 789. He also has 16 walks. I understand that. People don't want to pitch to this kid. Strong hands to hold up and not swing at that three and two. And I think, too, the thing for Harper, he's improved each and every year as a hitter. You could you used to be able to find and exploit some holes from him, but now anymore, they're, they're really small. Rockies do put three, as you can see, on the right side. They're going to go out there again. And this is lined toward Parra. He's going to have a play. And that ends the inning. Great start for Bettis. The offense got him two runs. It's Colorado two and Washington nothing as we go to the second. Sportsnet is brought to you by the 2018 Toyota Tundra in your hometown Toyota stores. By Jack in the Box, try the new Cholula. Buttery Jack, part of the Buttery Jack family, only at Jack in the Box. And by Southwest Airlines, low fares, no hidden fees. That's transparency. With Jeff Houston and Corey Sullivan, I'm Drew Goodman from our nation's capital. Second pitch to Pat Falake is a curveball. That's outside, and it is a one-and-one -one count. That first pitch was called a strike. They made a scoring change during the last uh, break. Two and one. And Ian Desmond's pop-up, which was initially scored a double and an RBI, has been changed to an E4. So an error on Howie Kendrick. This is the sixth error made by Washington this year. Two and two on Vallega. The Rockies and Nats came in and tied for the second best fielding percentage in all of baseball. That's Howie's third air. He has half of the airs for the Nationals. Now to strike three on the inside corner. Valenka is gone. One out. Second strikeout for Gio Gonzalez. And that'll bring up Gerardo Parra. into Gerardo today drew remember that we saw Gerardo and his little girl I re it's funny because I it, we the Rockies we were in San Francisco last year at this time of year and I was in a cab with this is toward the left side this could be a tough play for Trey Turner 
And he's not going to get Gerardo. Zimmerman goes up top to save it from maybe going into the stand. So it'll be an infield hit for Parr. Anyhow, uh, we share a cab. We're driving to the ballpark. Uh, and he was really excited because he was showing me that, uh, you know, his wife was about, was about to give birth. He, yeah. Two days later, he left the club, if you remember, uh -huh. and, and, and that's when their baby girl was born. And <laughs> on Saturday, she's going to turn one. I know. Well, there was an early infield base hit present for her. Yeah, she's adorable. So here's Bettis. Chad stabs at that. And I think any time you, you bunt in this series, I know sometimes it's going to call to go to third base, but, but for me, you bunt a lot towards Ryan Zimmerman at first. With his, with his arm and his throwing issues, and he just doesn't really throw anymore. Well, I remember his last season over at third, and, and you almost felt bad for yeah, him. That's what I mean. It was. He dropped, he dropped way out down. down. It was almost like uh, Simber for San Diego, the way he would throw that sidearm underhand throw all the way across the diamond. It looked uncomfortable for him, and it was uncomfortable to watch. So I want you to help me out with something. Chronologically, the Rockies played a day game yesterday. Did the fight between the Yankees and Boston happen after the Rockies altercation with San Diego? Yes. Yeah, it was at night. It was a night game, right? Yeah. I'm going to show you something uh, interesting okay. here in a moment. One ball, two strikes on Bettis. He'll be bunting again. Can do Parra. And that'll be a strikeout. Two outs. Parra remains the first. DJ LeMayu homeward comes up. So the other brawl, which happened after the Rockies brawl, the uh, commissioner's office has already handed out fines and suspensions. Joe Kelly, who threw the pitch, has been suspended six games. That's typical for a starting pitcher because then it guarantees that they miss a start. Tyler Austin, I'm sure they'll both appeal, but Tyler Austin was suspended five games. And players and coaches receiving undisclosed fines for the Yankees, Phil Nevin, CC Sabathia, Cora Bogarts, Marco Hernandez, Dustin Pedroia for Boston. But that, so happened, that's what that yeah. happened after the Rockies fight. Well, maybe they'll just forget about the Rockies fight. Maybe there won't be what, any suspensions that's then, what right? I, That's what I offered up at the uh, yeah. top of the broadcast. Maybe they maybe it, it just got lost out there in the mountain time zone. That's fine. Fine by me. Because out of all of it, Rockies are going to get penalized the most. If, if Nolan loses three, four, five games, whatever it may be. For San Diego, it doesn't matter who they suspend or fine because they're not going anywhere. Well, not only that, and it's not to knock A.J. Ellis. I have the greatest amount of respect for A.J. Ellis. A.J.'s the backup there right now. Sure. And in the case of Perdomo, he'll, he'll get suspended, probably similar to Joe Kelly. It'll be six games, so it'll be one start. But the Rockies were looking at suspensions. Nolan and Parr, I, I, I wouldn't think, uh, my, uh, this is complete speculation, I wouldn't think that Herman, who got thrown out, did enough to get suspended. No, I think he'll get a fine. He'll get a little fine in there. But that's what I mean. The Rockies are going to lose in all of this because of Nolan and or possibly Gerardo. Two and two on LeMahieu, homered to left field, leading off the ball game. And this ball's well hit to right. This could get in the corner, and it's a fair ball. Para to third, and he's going to get a green light as Harper didn't pick it up cleanly. That will allow him to score. DJ LeMahieu, been a one-man wrecking crew so far. Charlie Blackman inside. <laughs> he won't outwardly right now, but inside, he got a little smile on his face. He's oh, his not body. playing. But his buddy's picking him up. Well, and for DJ to hit a home run to left field into the bullpen and now right field, his bread and butter, 
Let's see what happened down in the corner. Oh, Harper just dropped that. It hit off his glove and dropped, allowing Gerardo to score from first. Even with the missed sacrifice bunt by Chad Bettis, you have the bobble in right, allowing you to score that run. I don't know if Stu Cole was going to send Para if he didn't. there wasn't an issue for Bryce Harper in that right field corner. So the Rockies up 3 nothing. home run double for LeMahieu. Halfway to a cycle. 1-0 on Iannetta. He walked his first time. Chris first game of a seven game trip for the Rockies four game series will be the conclusion of a ten game homestand for Washington just took two of three from Atlanta they lost in extras yesterday five to three that's a strike in fact when that Atlanta series began for Washington they had lost five straight throughout Scherzer and Strasburg with back to back shutouts Scherzer went nine complete game shutout and Strasburg went eight shutout innings allowing just three hits two two there's Max Scherzer every Rocky's year so 200 plus <laughs> innings and probably hey, uh, a how, Cy Young yeah but what he's what he's talked about a lot in the last couple of days was a stolen base the other day. He's so proud of that. So proud. When you're really good, you start <laughs> to look at you know, other categories. This ball to center field. Get down. Caught off the shoe tops by Michael Taylor. That is 100% Chris Iannetta's fault. He hit it too hard. Capital, courtesy of a couple RBIs by DJ LeMayhew. Fans for the win is brought to you by Pizza Ranch. Walks to forget. I mean, a lot of times you take walks to remember, but the Rockies, 35.6% of the time, the pitcher walks issued this year have come around to score. And you see that's second most in the major leagues. And if you're wondering what the major league average is, it's just 23.7%. This is lifted to right. Cargo. 
will make the catch with one foot on the warning track. So Ryan Zimmerman is retired. Now bring up Matt Adams, the former Cardinal. So let's stay away from walks. Walks at every level, a good thing to stay away from. But it has been an issue for the Rockies nearly going. And the Naps have had a similar problem. <laughs> Kansas City's far, so far out there, though. 47%. Here's the 1 0. Man, that's a strike. One ball, one strike on Adams. A lot of people predicting a long year for the Royals. Yeah, I think so. Maybe that's why Hosmer left. That 140 million reasons why he left. Lorenzo Cain left as well. One oh, ball, two strikes. Salvador Perez hurt his knee or ankle, something like that. Fell on some stairs right before the season. Alex Gordon's got more issues. That just evidently above the strike zone on the Subaru strike zone. They caught the top part of the zone. Two balls, two strikes. So that works out of the middle of that rubber. And this is on the ground to the left side. Keep the shift. First base runner for Washington, and that'll bring up Howie Kendrick. Join in on the conversation tonight. Send us your comments. Use Twitter and include the hashtag Toyota Talk. Well, of the young rotation for the Rockies, the youngest in baseball, Chad Bett is clearly. And this is not a knock on the other four. It just speaks to their relative inexperience. Chad Bettis pitches right now more than the yes. other four do. Yes. The other four have the, if you're going to scout on the scouting scale, have the better stuff. But they don't have the pitchability that Chad. Chad knows how to manipulate the baseball, how to put it inside, outside, up, down, take a little off. This is 101 appearances now in a Rockies uniform. And that's something these young guys can learn from. Everything doesn't have to be overpowering to a hitter. That's in there. One ball, one strike on Kendrick. He's off to a terrific start. 350 batting average. Got a nine game hitting streak in fat going. Chad was just motioning to himself. They can stay back a little bit and I need to get the ball down. That one was up in the zone that was taken for a for a strike. Not where you want to pitch. I, Chris Ionette is having trouble picking yeah. up the baseball. That is about four or five times that he has flinched with the pitch about mask high. Remember last inning, he was talking about it. Looked like he lost a strike and I don't know if, if the baseball's coming out of his hand blending in with, with something that's white. But he's not seeing it. This ball to short should be two. There's one and an easy double play off the field. The Rockies go. 6-4-3. Chad Bettis and Colorado up 3-0 going to the third.
up for the Rockies, and that includes Nolan Arenado. We thought we'd show you some interesting numbers of two of the game's bright young stars. When you take a look at Nolan Arenado and Bryce Harper since 2015 with their NL ranks, it's amazing how similar these guys are. Batting average the same, obviously home runs, Nolan's got a little bit of a lead. RBIs, he's got a big lead. And then you take a look at runs scored, Nolan's got a lead there. It's interesting when you see these two side by side because we all know the national recognition that Bryce Harper gets and the lack thereof that Nolan Arenado gets. What do you guys think up there? I agree with you. I mean, and they're both at the same age, too. Nolan might be a year older. I know Bryce is 26. Well, Bryce 25. 25 That's uh, I a mean, yeah. foul ball. He'll be 26 in October. That's what it is, yeah. But for Bryce, I mean, rookie of the year at age 19. Are you kidding me? MVP, MVP at 22. At 22 unanimously too. He was he would have been in the mix for the MVP last year. He lost 41 games late in the year with a hyperextended knee. Did that I, happen on the on the wet the, bag at, at first base? Yeah, he kind of tweaked it as he hit the bag on a wet rainy night. But it's when you come to a ball game, a major league ball game, and you have a chance to watch Nolan and Bryce Harper in the same venue because I'm with Corey they're they're two of the brightest young stars in, in the game today they're, they're two of the Top. young old middle well, in between exactly. they're the two two of the <laughs> five bright. or six best players in the yeah. sport we talked to Bryce a little bit before the game and he's one of those guys you enjoy talking to really yeah, he, nice guy to he's, us. He's, I he's, mean, a, he was, he's a good kid yeah and he has ties. I've told the story before. He does have ties to Colorado on one of the travel ball teams that he uh, was involved with. It was a team that was based out of Aurora. And we were one of the topics that we were discussing is how strong amateur baseball has become in our state. And, and Bryce said absolutely. Oh, yeah. and, he, and again, if you if you grew up in that Vegas, Phoenix, Denver triangle and you play travel baseball, you, you get to see a lot of the same faces, a lot of the same teams. And he was well aware of that. This ball's pulled foul of how good the baseball's become in Colorado. He and his wife just uh, built a house out in Henderson, not far from where he uh, grew up. Even imagine the path that he has been on, but Sports Illustrated graduating from high school so young. Three and two, good at bat going here for Nolan. These are the ones he always wins. It seems like. Yes, it does. And 55 pitches for Geo. They're making him earn every pitch. And a walk to Nolan leading off. Frustration from Gio Gonzalez. Trevor's story will come up next. Trevor struck out on a high fastball away, his first at bat. Rocky's got two in the first. The game started with a bang, literally. A home run by <laughs> DJ LeMay, who is third. Well, they gave him fastballs on every pitch his first time up. Which means he'll get a curveball here. No, we no. got a fastball. I, that's what I was thinking too, and that's why I said that. And that's what makes hitting so challenging. Because what we're talking about up here is the same thing you, you're talking to yourself in the batter's box about. Well, they gave me all fastball, so he's going to start me off with the curveball, I'm sure. speed there and it's one and one Geo in his first two outings retired the leadoff man all good pitchers seem to do this at a high rate 11 out of uh, 13 leadoff men in his first two outings tonight just one out of three Hialeah, Florida. First round pick in 2004 by the Chicago White Sox. Reminds me a little bit of Marco Gonzalez, not only how he pitches, but 
He pitched in the state championship game as a freshman in high school. And of course, Marco did also. Marco with Rocky Mountain all in all four, four years. All four years, yeah. yeah. When Marco Gonzalez was there playing for his dad. And once again, now in the Rockies organization. Two balls, two strikes on Story with Nolan at first, nobody out, top of three. Seventy seven mile an hour on the curveball. Nobody has gotten a hit against this curveball yet for, this year. Yeah, 0 for 9 against the curveball when it's a two strike and four strikeouts. And the changeup, well, they're tearing the cover off the ball against this changeup. They're hitting 091. It's been the fastball. Leagues hitting over 400 against his heater. 2 2. Nice job so, covering that pitch by Story. So you're talking about Geo and the slugging percentage on the curveballs, the knuckle curves. Of course, Corey Kluber with his whatever slider. your slider, Jerry Blevins from the left side, and Steven Strasburg. Okay, that's fine, but you mentioned the fastball, 417. That's the fourth highest batting average in the major leagues against the fastball. Change that up. was a changeup. He took something off that, yeah, and he got the strikeout on story one out. And he'll bring up Ian Desmond. Straight out of the hand, just pulled the string. Not much movement going down or away from the left. It's just all about the speed of the baseball at 83 miles an hour compared to the 89, and he threw the 91 mile an hour fastball to strike Trevor out the first time in the first inning. So here's Desmond who goes way back with Gio Gonzalez and this should turn into a hit. Gio elected to field it and it was going to be an easy play at least for the force play for Trey Turner. So an infield hit for Desmond two on one out. A natural reaction by a pitcher to go up there and try to get it. You don't take it. It's the glove base hit. I'm you, starting never, to say, you never complain about a base hit. You yeah. never say I'm sorry. I was watching a, a college game today. Tennessee and Tennessee Martin and. Uh, old friend from Iraqi Todd Walker was doing the. Uh, analyst work on it and somebody had kind of a swinging bunt for a hit and he said you know what. He goes, I take four of those every day during my <laughs> career. There's a strike on Cargo. Yeah, you would. He swung at a 3 0 pitch and uh, got jammed, which you, you hate to do when you're way no, ahead in the count. You, you can't. 3 0 count, you get the green light, got to hook that one foul. Even if you hook it into the, the dugout, get the barrel out. We're talking about four hits in a day. The, the old line is a hit a day will keep the doctor away. Yep. <laughs> and then that, that that other day you get two. Now you're starting to you, you don't have to worry about it as much. You, your your mind's clear. You feel good. Game's hard enough. You're not going to kick those away. One ball, one strike. Cargo hooks this one past Tony Diaz, one and two. That's kind of the pitch I was uh, I was talking about. If you get a 3-0 count, you know. Worst case, you hook it foul. Now the curveball shows up more than 25% of the time with the Geo, but against lefties ahead in the count, he really features it. And he got him with a fastball up. Five strikeouts for Gonzalez. Pat Baleka will come up. Fans, when the Rockies score seven runs or more, go to participating Colorado Taco Bell locations the next day. Do it between four and six to get your Rockies taco special. The boss at Taco Bell. Nolan is at second. He walked an infield hit for Desmond. He's at first. All right, Patty Barrels. It's time. Time to get that first homer of the year. Oh, 
the inside corner for a strike. Rockies went four and three on their first road trip. To Arizona and San Diego. And they averaged almost four and a half runs per game out on that first road trip. Yeah, from the go figure category, 4.4 runs out on the road so far. And in the seven game homestand, the Rockies averages 3.3 runs. They dropped that one in the back. Part of the plate on Pat. Two guys going to one another tonight that know how to pitch. Gio Gonzalez and Chad Bettis. Rockies up 3-0. Two on, 1-2 with two outs on Pat Baleka. Out of play. Had a shortstop at UCLA and through a good portion of his minor league career. Pat won a minor league gold glove at short. He won a gold glove or gold glove recognition for his play at UCLA at shortstop. One and two. And this is a fair ball, long throw by Rendon, and it's accurate. So the Rockies had a hit and a walk, two men left on. Middle of three, Colorado leading Washington 3 0 in D.C. They're cranes. Cranes, they're cranes. And um, I counted oh, within like 500 yards of the ballpark, there are 10 cranes. They are blowing up this neighborhood on the Anacostia I River, right by the ballpark. Restaurants and new homes, obviously uh, condos galore. Matt Weeders hits in in the air to fairly deep left field. Para drifting back has it shy of the track one out. The only thing with the cranes, they block our view of the Capitol. Well, you can still see the Capitol. I know, but it's not quite as clear and crisp as it was before. Can you, can you all take that crane down? Yeah, please. The, just, just, you know, just keep sliding. Yeah, please, because you're, you're blocking our view of the Capitol. Yeah. 
That's a great ballpark. It's always great to be in, in Washington. I, I enjoy coming here. I it mean, is. And, the, and the schedule maker has always provided the Rockies either with a four-game series or, or a day, day off. Yeah. So we, we appreciate that, Mr. Error Misses <laughs> schedule maker. Gio Gonzalez is hitting out of the eighth spot in the lineup. He takes ball one. Gio has three career home runs. Though as a friend of ours within the Nationals organization said, he can't hit a lick, but he's run into three baseballs <laughs> in his career. <laughs> I hope I don't eat the words right here. That's off the plate. Two and one. And then if that, happen, happen, you know, if that I, happens, you respond to all the people that say I jinxed it. I, and what I say to that, if I had that much control over what happened. You wouldn't be a baseball broadcaster. Right. I would, I would do some other good with it. There you go. Two and two. And we didn't jinx it. No, we didn't. Second strikeout of the night for Chad Bettis. Too quickly gone, and that'll bring up Michael Taylor. Well, it's strange also to, to come to Washington and not see Jason Worth. But after uh, fulfilling his lengthy and very profitable contract, he did a nice job in Washington. He's one of those guys that's sitting on the still, sideline still right now. Limbo. But uh, they wanted to also make room for Michael Taylor. Did a really good job in center field last year. You know, he took over in center field after Adam Eaton. And, and Adam Blew Eaton. I'm glad you, yeah, I'm glad you brought up Adam Eaton. Adam Eaton was off to a fabulous start. Now he has a bone bruise in the ankle area, and he's on the disabled list. This, come back. this may be Ooh. playable for Pat if he has longer arms, like really long arms. Two strikes on Michael Taylor. So Eaton's down, and Daniel Murphy, he had microfractured knee surgery right after they were eliminated last October. He kind of battled through some knee pain throughout the year last year. He still hit well over 300. That guy could flat rake. Um, he is swinging the bat again. There's Murphy, and he's going to go out in the not-too-distant future, and they hope to have him back in a couple of weeks. Chad Bettis has faced the minimum through three innings. And the Rockies, as we go to the fourth, in front three to nothing.
<laughs> uh, below us, the blimps yeah. can't go to this altitude, Spilly. You remember. We saw They're a few a planes uh, getting ready to land right in front of us. Cranes, us. Trains, trains, and automobiles. Oh. Are going to make a movie of that? May have to. Gerardo Parra scored a run in the second. He had a leadoff uh, infield hit. And the reason we always make reference to this, that we love coming to, to Washington. Nationals Park is beautiful, but we're at the very top of the stadium. Makes it a more of a challenge. Uh, kind of way up here. Get a, way, yeah, way, to, to get way a, up here. Yeah, to get a feel off the bat. And it's the same thing in Pittsburgh, where the Rockies will play next. Well, at least the schedule makers were nice in that regard. We get used to this high altitude, calling a baseball game. We do this for seven straight games, and we don't have to worry about it anymore. That's true. And Para rolls this to Tony Diaz, and that's one that Tony will pick up. Joking with Tony today. Because he hits fungos hard. I mean, he smashes them at the guys. He goes, oh, that's the way they hit him in the game. So, yeah. Okay. That's the way you do it. That makes sense. <laughs> no swing. Home plate umpire tonight's Ben May. Ron Culp is at first. Gabe Morales at second. And Jerry Meals, who they just checked with. Jerry's the crew chief. He's at third. With ben May. Seventy eighth pitch already. And retreating and making the play is Zimmerman and great effort by Parra trying to beat Gio Gonzalez one out. Fans looking for an affordable way to entertain family, friends, clients, or employees. Ask about the Sunday, Monday Super Sweet Special. Tickets start at hundred dollars per person and includes a catering package. Call 303 Rockies or go to rockies.com slash sweets for more information. Chad couldn't get a sack bunt down his first time up, so he was a strikeout victim. Good curveball. Rocky snapped that three game losing streak yesterday. Six to four in beating San Diego. Two outs, six strikeouts for Gio Gonzalez. And here's the hitting star of the night, DJ LeMayhew coming up. Home run in the first, RBI double in the second. And the party got started early tonight with DJ. Home run to left field. That's his third home run, fifth RBI, but he's not done yet because he doubles to the right field corner. Bobble by Bryce Harper, but Gerardo Parra scores from yeah, first base, two RBIs, and the hitting start continues. Curveball, fastball, two strikes, which is not an issue for DJ Lemayhu. Truly, one of the best two-strike hitters in baseball. Look, guys, well, you even at this level, they kind of melt down when they get to two strikes. I didn't like hitting with two strikes. Very few people do. He doesn't mind. The shortstop, Trey Turner, and Gio Gonzalez, easily his best inning. A one-two-three-fourth. Rockies leading three nothing.
Let us take a look at our Central League High Speed Challenge question. Go to AT&T Sportsnet RM on Twitter to cast your vote. Which of the following Smithsonian museums would you most like to visit? Air and space, American history, American art, or natural history? And that's, uh, we could go E, F, G, H, I, J, K. There's so many. In fact, last time we were here was about five or six months after the African American Museum, History Museum opened up. Center field, the Desmond Petroleum Center. First time this year for the Rockies. First time actually in a Rockies uniform, period, that he's been in center field. One started shortstop last year. The lines were around the buildings, right across the Washington Monument. So we went by there today, the lines have, are, are a little smaller because yeah. it's now been open for almost uh, well, about a year the, and a half. Yeah, and the Washington Monument, too, that's closed because they're renovating the elevator for that, so you can't go up. Go and that up was and closed out. last summer, too, was yeah, it not? Yeah, they, were, they were fixing it, so they're trying to modernize that. Rendon takes a strike. Inside on that Subaru strike zone. A little backup curveball. I, I got to go with the air and space. I love the air and space. Got to go with that one. Uh, of the four we show. That ball's going to stay yeah, here. Yeah, Pat's going to have a play on this one. Two outs as Rendon is retired. What a contrast tonight so far between Bettis and Gonzalez. Gio has thrown over 80 pitches, and Bettis has thrown <laughs> only 38. He's got two outs in the fourth. And that's, if there's one thing you need and want to do against every club, but I think it's imperative against the Washington Nationals. You've got to get their starters out of there because their bullpen has not been their strong suit. Yeah, their bullpen has an ERA close to six. Fifth worst in major leagues. Here's Bryce Harper lined out to left his first time up on a 3-2 pitch. We're talking about ties to Colorado. You know, the fact that he played on a travel ball team at one point out of Aurora. He also, remember, he, he got his GED, graduated early. And at 17, he was playing for Southern Nevada. It's one year of junior college baseball. And they he, he led them to the Junior College World Series, which was a great, great event put on by Jamie Hamilton Jamie. and our friends over on the, on the Western Slope. And he was ejected in the middle of the Junior College World Series by a home plate umpire who will tell that story until the day he kicks for arguing balls and strikes. What he actually did, he, he was called out on a pitch he thought was inside and he did the, you know, the no-no of drawing a line where he thought the ball came across in the batter's uh -huh. box and the, you know, the home plate umpire immediately ejected him. Mike Dunn also went to Southern Nevada. It's a good program, Southern Nevada. One-two on Harper. Balls in the dirt. I'm sure Bryce Harper, just like Mike Dunn, are big Golden Knight hockey fans, and they won last night one nothing. Avs are going at it tonight. Starting that series with Nashville. Two balls, two strikes on Harper. Already a five-time All-Star. That's why he hits over 300. He spits on any borderline pitch. Outfield straight up, three on the right side. Another 3 2 delivery to Harper. And he got him with a changeup. What a pitch! What a job Chad Bettis is doing. Let's talk about. Pitching and carving away. That is what Bettis has done so far.
Football on AT&T Sportsnet is brought to you by Subaru. Love, it's what makes a Subaru a Subaru. And by O'Toole's Garden Centers, putting the color into Colorado. To the fifth inning we go. DJ LeMahieu on offense and Chad Bettis twirling a gem so far. Rockies fans in attendance. Chris Iannetta at the two spot takes inside ball one. Chris walked and scored in the first and had an RBI taken away from him by Michael Taylor. He lined the ball to center field in the second with DJ LeMahieu at second base and Taylor literally reached down and caught it right at his shoelaces. And he did it rather casually. He's athletic. Good player. Yeah, he is a, a very good player. So Bettis just 19 pitches to navigate the third and fourth against Washington. Geo falls behind three and nothing. We mentioned it before, Chris, last year 19 times hit out of the second spot, 33, 34 times in his career he's done it. So he's not unfamiliar with that spot. And I think the number of pitches that he takes also when you have to kind of be creative with your lineup, he's a good guy to put there. He really is. Three and one. And this next pitch is it's three and two. This next pitch will be number 90 for Gio Gonzalez. And there's not even anybody stirring out of their bullpen. They're all just sitting there watching this game. Ball four. I have to believe, I'm talking about mid April, well, that. I that this is the final inning for Gia. And I was just looking too. In, in the two games that he's pitched prior to this, 92 pitches both games. Dave Martinez pitching coach Derek Lilliquist. 57 strikes, 33 balls, but the Rockies have been patient when they need to be patient with him. They've had a good approach. Nolan takes a strike. Nolan robbed of extra bases by Michael Taylor in deep right center field his first time up, and then he drew a walk in the third. One of three walks now issued by Gonzalez. One and one. Nolan hitting 420 the last year plus against lefties. He has a 1307 OPS in base plus slugging against lefties over that time frame. And this is poked to right, drifting into the seats out of play. Nolan's looking to do that more and more. Teams are pitching him away, and he's saying, that's fine. I can get hits that direction. Well, there was an article in StatCast about that. And where he is being pitched, especially when he's behind the count, everything seems to be away. Daniel Kramer broke that down. It shows you why he's going that way. This is pulled off the glove of Rendon into no man's land. And Ionetta is going to get to third. Nolan will cruise into second with a double. Second and third, nobody out for the Rockies. Already ahead, three to nothing. He's just taking what they're, they're giving him offensively. A little slow break in pitch. Randon tries to slide around it. And this is two times tonight. you got to give some credit to Chris Ionetti. The first time he took second base on a wild pitch. It didn't get far away from Matt Wieters. Now this time with the ball going down the left field line, he's able to go first to third. It's the old adage, you don't have to be a fast guy to be a good base runner. You just have to have some instincts. Now for Washington, they're going to play the right side of their infield in and halfway on the left side at shortstop. Gio's not happy with that call. Kind of gave a shrug of the shoulders. And I, I'm, I'm amazed. I'm still looking down at that bullpen of right? Washington and nobody's stretching, nobody's doing anything. One zero on story. 
But now, if, if you're Trevor, you get to figure they've been pitching you with fastballs. You you got to be able to get this one in the air. Second and third, nobody out. The Rockies have to find a way at the end of this inning to get both of those guys to the promised land. The right the part of the order, Story, Desmond, Cargo. We saw the other day when that happened, second, third, nobody out. They didn't score a run. Again, the, their offensive numbers small sample size folks we're talking about 13 games here, are not nearly what they will be Came into the ball game hitting 232 21st in baseball 20th and on base percentage 17th in OPS you know, check back in a few weeks exactly. but, but, but here's a you know, you're trying to win a ball game you're not worried about overall stats no but you're 14 games into the season and right now you have to find a way to cash in on what has developed so far in this fifth inning. Last year the Rockies hit 285 with runners in scoring position. Weeders will go out for a mound visit. will be joined by Howie Kendrick. Pitch will be number 99. Many of them out of the stress, or out of the stretch, which are stressful, stressful. pitches. You know where I was yeah, going. Yeah. Uh -huh. The phone just rang down in the in the bullpen for the Nationals. Two two on story. Strike three. Three strikeouts tonight for Trevor. Two swinging and the last one looking. This becomes a real pressure filled at bat. You know, if you can say that in the middle of the game for Ian Desmond because behind him is Cargo and if he's unable to get a run in. It's left on left with two outs where you have to have a hit. Defensively, they're playing it the same way infield in on the right side. The Rockies this year have had issues with strikeouts. In nine of the 13 games they've played, they have struck out 10 or more times. Struck out seven times tonight. And so in two on Desmond. Facing a guy that he played against growing up in the state of Florida. And obviously, they were teammates for a number of years. On the ground to third, Rendon's going to come home with it, and Ionetta's hung up. He'll get the out there, Desmond to second. With one out, typically you will see guys go on contact. And this is called from the bench. Chris takes off no matter where it's hit. Rendon throws it to Weeders. All Chris wants to do at this point is to stay in the rundown long enough to allow Ian to get all the way to second base. So you're basically in the same spot that you were prior to that ground ball, but you got a little faster runner at third with Nolan and definitely a faster one at second base. But now it's that now situation you, you were talking about, Drew. You got left on left, you got two outs, and, it, and an opportunity for Gio Gonzalez to wiggle out of this without giving up a run. Rockies now 0 for 7 with runners in scoring position tonight. 0 and 1 on cargo. And for the Nationals now, it is Matt Grace, the left-hander, up and getting loose in their bullpen. This 
Henry Blanco. Major League catcher for a number of teams. He's a bullpen coach. Guarantee he still gets down to squat and catches some guys periodically, huh? Bet he does. 1 1. Two strikes. And this is bounced to first. And then they'll run to the bag. And the Rockies with runners at second and third. And nobody out. In the middle of the order, failed to score. Hopefully that does not come back to haunt them. They're up 3 nothing. With Charlie Blackman a little bit banged up, I asked Ian Desmond about playing center field at Nationals Park. It's funny because the last time I was actually on this field was after the last game. You know, I was waiting for like a flight to leave at like six o'clock in the morning, so I just stayed here and I went out to center field and just like sat there and you know, kind of just looked around the stadium and kind of took it all in one last time. But it was in center field, so it's pretty poetic that the next time I'm on the field is going to be out in center field. Pretty special moment that he shared right there. It's also pretty unique that you get to hear the psyche of a player when he thinks he's saying goodbye to a stadium. I don't know, Huey, if you had any of those moments, but uh, it's pretty cool that he shared that with us. Kind of full circle, isn't it, Corey, for him to be able to do that? And for me, I had one of those moments, and when we go to Pittsburgh in three days, I'll relive that a little bit in that I had my first major league hit at Old Three River Stadium and I got my last major league hit there. So I kind of knew it was it. And I, after the game, I sat in the dugout for a little bit, kind of took it all in and cried a little bit, knowing that that was it. Desmond played uh, 130 games out there for the Texas Rangers. And I don't care where you put him, he's going to look natural. Yeah. Well, I mean, when he played those 130 games for Texas, they had originally had him in left field. And then they had an injury, so they said, well, tonight you're going to play center field. Okay. Not a big deal. One out. Zimmerman retired. Matt Adams at the plate. He has the only hit. A bouncer through the uh, shift on the left side of the infield. Then he was immediately erased on the ground ball double play off the bat of Howie Kendrick. 14th double play. The Rockies have turned this year. Rockies with five hits. The Nationals that... Uh, Lone single by Adams. And he rolls this one over. Baleka 
Good footwork working back to the bag, wasn't it, Huey? It was for Pat, and also good footwork at first for Chad Bettis because he beat everybody over there, so he had to chop his feet and wait just a second so he didn't run past the bag. So Pat ranges to his right. He's got it. Watch Chad, though. He breaks it down. Okay, I got it, but if he keeps running, catches it, and then it's a toe drag going across the bag. Automatic break. You just came out of spring training doing those PFPs, pitcher fielding practice. Anything to the right side, you can't assume, you can't hesitate, you just got to go. And Chad was here in plenty of time. Good coordination there, two outs. Curveball a strike to Howie Kendrick. The Rockies also do that sometimes throughout the season where they'll just brush up on all those little plays. Kendrick hits this in the air to deep center. Going back is Desmond. He can't make a play. It's gone. So Kendrick gets Washington on the board. It's 3-1. to one. First of the year for Howie Kendrick. Game hits, but 10 games this year, but he had a hit in his last game last year, so that does carry over. Subaru Supermo, that didn't have the downward tilt that Chad wanted. It's also Howie's first home run of the year, sixth RBI. Matt Wieters takes a curveball outside. He had a fly ball to left his first time up. Three and zero on Weeders. Second here with Washington after. Working less than an hour away in Baltimore. I wonder if he kept his house and just commutes. I would guess. Four top All Star. And a four pitch walk to Weeders. And then we get a pinch hitter for Gio Gonzalez. Pedro Severino. Oh, excuse me. No, that's uh, that's Voices, Voices Sierra. Sierra. Have known that Severino's are backup catcher. They would they would hit him right now. I blame it on how high we are up here. I'll just go with that. Okay, yeah, you saw an S on the I back. Yep. Well, he Voices was just brought up when they had to put Adam Eaton on the DL. Well, they would have brought up their top prospect, Victor Robles, who had better prospects in all of baseball, but a little bit of an injury. This ball's well hit the center field, and it's over the head of Desmond. Readers will get a stop sign on the double by Sierra. Now the tying run is second for Michael Taylor. A pinch double by Sierra. Oh, is hit hard. One hop the wall, short hop the wall in center field. Ian goes back and plays it nicely. I don't think Readers would have scored anyway with his wheels, but. Getting the ball back in like that wasn't even an option. Taylor had a fly ball to center field his first time up. And a ground ball to Nolan. And that will put down that threat, though a run did score on the home run by Howie Kendrick. We'll go to the sixth. The Rockies up three to one.
he lives in Virginia. So he's uh, very close to home. Taking over is Matt Grace, left-hander who throws a heavy sinker. This will be his eighth appearance. The league's not doing much with him. Eight strikeouts and eight in the third. An 0.77 opponent batting average. About 90 miles an hour on the fastball is what you'll get and straight out of the hand on the Subaru strike zone. 90 miles an hour. You also throw a slider. I don't see him throwing a change up tonight. Not like Geo had his change up. Watch it. Wow, that ball was hooked hard over the dirt. Corey, that went right over your head. You okay? To be honest with you, I as soon as the cameraman in front of me ducked, I ducked and covered. I had <laughs> no I, I couldn't see anything. All I saw was the microphone go down yeah. to the floor. Yeah. That's all I saw. That's from pretty you. much how it played out. Okay. Pat Falake out of UCLA against Matt Grace out of UCLA. Grace was there a little bit uh, in front of Pat Vileka. Yeah. They don't even look. Like they knew that ball was traveling at a high rate of speed. Foul ball. Off the bat of Pat. I just thought Corey's in we out on the road with us. I don't need him getting injured on the first night. I'm just, I'm just glad that there's netting now. Well, that's why you baseball. saw the players' reaction, right? I'm gonna daringly stand up, but as Patty fouls another one off. Guys, I honestly, I if that had hit me, I don't know what I'd have done because I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't see it. <laughs> well, see, okay. see, we got to rely on this gentleman right here uh -huh. to block the ball for me. And then when he moves out of the way, I got nothing because yeah. I got less than about three feet to get out of the uh -huh. way. There you go, grab it, Corey. That one was much slower. Yeah, that one was much easier. We're gonna have to. Uh, uh, we're gonna. Yep. There we go. One and two on Valeka. And that is fair. Rendon. That was a great play. Good play from you Anthony. Know, Anthony Rendon overshadowed in the National League, isn't everybody, by the defensive wizardry of Nolan. But this guy can defend also. He's played some second base in his career. He's going to play shortstop. But now they have him over a third. And Comes and whips that sidearm right on the money to Ryan Zimmer to, to get Pat by a quarter step. Par an infield hit and a ground ball to first. And Para with a base hit to right. Starting to throw out some hits now, Huey, after a slow start. Yeah, he's got two now on the year. <laughs> Average starting to climb back up. Chad will be asked to get a bunt down again. Could not do it in the second inning. Two strikeouts tonight for Bettis. Pitched a gem so far. He run a Howie Kendrick home run to straightaway center field last half inning. But the big out with two in scoring position against Michael Taylor a couple of minutes ago. Outside. This has been the best road city for the Rockies in their history. They're 27 and 16 in. DC that goes back to when the games were being played at RFK. I never played in RFK. You broadcast with me there, right? Were nope. you over there? No. It was George. Huh? No, it was George. This place opened in 2008.
two and one. Two and two. Chaz just stabbing at the baseball a little bit. Gets that bat out there in good shape. Instead of stabbing at it, it's like you, you have a glove on your back. You try to catch it, receive it. That helps deaden the baseball. Well, for many, especially you know, pitchers who they feel like they're in a foreign land when they're at the plate. <laughs> anyhow, it's uncomfortable e exposing yourself. And again, Chad unable to help his own cause. For kids, big and small, be sure to visit the Arrow Arcade presented by Arrow Lock Electronics, located in the interactive area on the main concourse in center field. LeMahieu comes up, a home run, a double, and a ground ball to short. Gio Gonzalez, five innings, three runs, two earned, five hits, three walks, seven strikeouts. This is the first frame from Matt Grace. He pitched at UCLA when Garrett Cole was a big star there. And this ball is lined to deep left center field. Get up ball. And this one is gone. How about a two over a night for LeMahieu? 5 1 Colorado. He may be batting cleanup tomorrow. <laughs> That's four RBIs on the night for DJ. He's making like Chuck Nasty. <laughs> He's hitting he from just, the right side. He just tied Charlie in home runs. Four home runs for DJ <laughs> with DJ. Eight last year. What we talked about during spring training. Uh -huh. He was looking to turn on more balls. And he turned on two tonight. That one in left center field in the bleachers of the sixth or seventh row. You know, after the disappointment last inning offensively, he had he second and third, nobody out, and did not score. That swing of the bat on the Subaru Supermo is enormous. Huge also, too, because Howie Kendrick hit a home run. Then you had a walk. Then you had a double. If Chad gives up a base hit to Taylor, ball game's tied. You're sitting there 3-3. Three, three. It didn't happen. He gets out of it. And the hero tonight in DJ LeMahieu comes through again. It's like a, it literally, it's like a four-run swing. Ionette has done a great job tonight. He's earned a couple of walks. He's only out with a line out to center. Scored a run. Second two homer game for LeMayhew. DJ didn't hit his fourth home run last year to July 7th. Said it a thousand times. He's a championship caliber player, a winning player. Chris Ionette has always been a winner. And there's a base hit whistled up the middle. And that'll give Nolan a shot here in the sixth. So Matt Grace, who came in with great numbers, is being uh, <laughs> rudely treated by the Rockies. <laughs> Nolan doubled down the left field line in the fifth. One for two and a walk. Derek Lilliquist is the uh, pitching coach for Washington. They have an entire new staff with one exception. Bob Henley is a holdover. He's the third base coach from Dave Martinez. He also worked for Dusty last year. So here's a look. Chip Hale, who's the manager of Arizona. Chip is with uh, Dave. Kevin Long, Yankee hitting coach, Mets hitting coach, and now down the road in D.C. 
Tim Bogars at first. We saw Henry Blanco earlier. Bogar was a bench coach last year in Seattle. This is in the air to left center field. Michael Taylor and what is going on? I don't know. Matt Adams, Michael Taylor looked like that was going to be a routine fly ball. Next thing you know, he's caught catching it at the track. That boy, DJ! performance of the night. Chad Bettis has uh, been terrific tonight. The one blemish of Howie Kendrick home run. Other than that, it's been uh, ground ball after ground ball. And he has kept Washington off balance. He struck out Harper in his last at bat. And now in the sixth inning, he left Trey Turner in the top of the order. Little cutters off the plate. Ball one. Turner a strikeout and a fly ball to center field. The first Five in the very talented Washington order are one for ten against Bettis. That's on the corner. In a perfect world when Adam Eaton's playing that Trey Turner would hit second in their lineup. Sometimes he's hit even six or seven. You got to hustle here because Turner can really run. That's amazing. He had a comebacker and a bang bang at first. Good play by Chad. Trey Turner is one of the three or four fastest guys yeah. in baseball. That's why it's imperative you keep him off the bases. Get out of NC State. 62 pitches in, one out in the sixth inning for Bettis. Anthony Rendon, fly ball to left, and he fouled out to Valleca. Down the heart in the Subaru strike zone. A lot of people in baseball, when discussing the Nationals, like to point out the fact that, I should say the fact, they like to point out that in some people's mind, the window could be closing for Washington to win a world championship with all this talent because, after all, Bryce Harper, who is certainly the offensive face of this franchise, is going to be a free agent, as we all know, at the conclusion of the 2018 season. But I say not so fast, it, because if you look at their team, there's a whole lot of guys that are going to be back named Scherzer and Strasburg, Strasburg and Rendon and Zimmerman. So, you know, even if Harper, and there's no guarantee he leaves, but even if he were to, and he's a great player. Uh -huh. You still cut, have. You still got a lot of talent. 
Center field. Ian reads it. He's got it. And Rendon is the second out in the sixth inning, and that will bring up the aforementioned Harper. But I also think it goes to the two guys you mentioned, the Strasburg and Scherzer. The, the two horses. And, and Gio Gonzalez. Right, right. So they got the horses up in the pitching staff. Tanner Roark is no slouch. <laughs> Say. This is going to be an interesting well, free agent class. It, it is. It's it's headed up by the guy at the plate and Manny Machado, who works less than an hour away near Old Town in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. I mean, Clayton Kershaw could opt out of his deal with Los Angeles. Josh Donaldson. Josh Donaldson will be is a huge name, but much further down the pecking order financially for me and because of his age, age when you compare it to Harper and Machado. And he's been playing on the turf in Toronto. That age is your body. The turf. Dennis has got five ground outs, nine fly outs, three strikeouts. He's, he's also, pitched. Well, he's also retired with, with turn. All the leadoff guys tonight. Yeah, so Harper's coming up for the third time with two outs and nobody on. If you have to pitch to Harper, that's mm -hmm. how you'd like to do it. We were watching his BP today. We've heard his marvel for years at how hard and far cargo effortlessly hits the baseball in batting practice. This guy's the same guy. I mean, he hits absolute <laughs> missiles. Part of the joy of our job coming here and watching guys take batting practice. 2-2 two -two and he struck him out again. Have a night, Chad Bettis. We move to the seventh at Nats Park. 5-1 Rockies. Rockies baseball on AT&T SportsCenter is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Low fares, no hidden fees. That's transparency. With Jeff Houston and Corey Sullivan, I'm Drew Goodman. To the seventh inning we go. The Rockies trying to start out the road trip with a W over the Washington Nationals. Trevor Story and Desmond Carlos Gonzalez. And a new pitcher in the ball game for Washington. This will be the third utilized. Let's go back to that. Last pitch from Chad. Watch a quick pitch here to Bryce Harper. Speeds it up. And that just threw the timing of Harper off. Trevor Gott takes over. And there's a bunt. Gott will make the play on Story. 
just not far enough towards the line. Drew, you've heard me say it before. You're gonna bunt early on, where you go, first pitch, fair or foul. Just too close to the pitcher. Well, Trevor got fourth game this year. Hard throwing right hand, not a big guy, but it's a mid to upper 90s mile an hour fastball. A little different delivery, drops down. Uh, a slinger. Yeah, three quarters, low three quarters. Desmond, an infield hit in three at bats. He had a pop up in the first inning that Howie Kendrick misplayed. Initially, it was called a double. They changed it to an error, but it produced the Rockies' second run in that first inning. And the Rockies had a 2 0 lead after one, which is hard to do against Washington because coming into the ball game, Washington had scored a first inning run in nine of their 12 games. In fact, three of the last four, they'd scored two in the first. Yeah, even the game they lost yesterday, they scored. It's just, when you get ahead of a club, it's so much more relaxing for that player. Even though it's the first inning, you just feel like you are in control. That's a pretty nasty slider from Trevor Gott. And Trevor uh, got him with that slider. 96 on the fastball. And a sideward slider. And I see what you did there. I wasn't going to laugh out loud with the got him slider, but I see how you will play on words. Well, I can't take credit for that. It would take me four days to come up with that. <laughs> Allison <laughs> Hill, our producer, made me, like, yeah, made me like a ventriloquist. 1 0 on cargo. Pop out, strike out, ground out tonight for. Carlos. 2 0. Eight hits for the Rockies, just three allowed by Chad Bettis. With the win, the Rockies can get back to 500. Parco's hits so far this year are equally distributed. A third to left, a third to center, a third to right. And right back at Trevor Gott. One, two, three inning. We'll go to the bottom of the seventh inning. The Rockies five, the Nationals one.
say four to one because it would be DJ still leading them four to one with his four RBIs and two home runs tonight as we head to the bottom of the seventh inning. Fans, trust your gut, pick the right player, and get one step closer to winning $5.6 million. Download Beat the Streak today. But not to be lost in all of DJ's heroics offensively has been the pitching tonight, the pitching performance of Chad Bettis. Five ground outs, nine fly outs, four strikeouts, and a complete control. 71 pitches, 44 for strikes, just 27 balls. Ryan Zimmerman will lead it off. He's off to a very slow start, just four for 38. That fastball is inside. What an interesting thing about Ryan Zimmerman today that he didn't play one inning of a major league spring training game this year. All his work was on the backfield. In minor league games, took his at bats back there, not one game. I have to find out why. Why would it? Why would they, he? The, my sources say they're not sure why. I'm going to get better sources. Well, I know, but I'm just saying that's what my source said. He didn't know. Well, last year I know this. He had a great year. Hit 303, 36 home runs, 108 driven in, which was the best year of his career when it looked like he was in decline. That's been over the previous three or four years. Time face of the Washington Nationals franchise. Again, he's the only guy who's played in more games than Ian Desmond with Washington. 2 2. Zimmerman out of the University of Virginia. And still did an update a couple of innings ago. They just signed to a minor league contract. Another University of Virginia product, Mark Reynolds. Zimmerman stays alive. Healthy last year with 144 games at that big season. Mike Rizzo, their general manager, who's really done an outstanding job of putting this roster together, he just recently got a two year contract extension. Ties to the Arizona organization. We see him on the field a lot when we're here. Yeah, Mike travels. He's uh, you know, and, and Jeff Bright is pretty much the same yeah. way. Now. Jeff, Jeff is a very visible general manager. Mike Rizzo, a very visible general manager. This pitch number ten. In this at bat to Ryan. The hardest Chad's had to work tonight. There's been a lot of one pitch uh, and two pitch outs produced by Chad. He tried to quick pitch him with a cutter and he just missed. He's different. Reaches. It's the first leadoff man tonight to reach against Bettis. Second walk. Allowed by Chad. This is as deep as he has worked into a game this year. And I like what Chris is doing now. He's not really worried about the, you know, the number of visits to the mound after you go through a 10 pitch at bat to a hitter and then you end up walking him. It's just Chris slowing the game. Let Chad catch his breath. 
those two guys think about some of the options that are coming up, where you want to go. Here's Matt Adams. He was with the Cardinals at Braves last year. And that pitches away. 20 home runs between those two clubs. Most of his good work done with Atlanta. When Freddie Freeman got hurt. They made the trade for Matt Adams. And then he was doing so well when Freddie came back, they had to flop him out to the outfield. He couldn't sit his his bat down. Well, remember Freddie kind of offered to maybe go over on the other side, play some third base. Did, didn't he do that for a game or yeah. two? <laughs> Talk about unselfish. You're an all-star. You're one of the top players in the game. And he said, hey, this guy, we need him in the lineup. I'll go play I'll third go. base. That experiment did not last long. No. One two on Adams downstairs two and two. Adams signed here by Washington basically takes the place of another guy. Who's very productive left handed bat coming off the bench and Adam Lynn. Who's Adam Lynn? I'm trying to think. To look that one up. Trying to help you off the top of my head and I can't. Strike three. three. Adams has to go away all over the inside corner down low on the Subaru strike zone. And that'll bring up Howie Kendrick. Put it away and it didn't get there. Chris had to reach across his body, but Ben May called it a strike. This well, when in doubt, assume that the guy's unsigned these days yeah. the way they went to work, and that's <laughs> yes. that's the case okay. with Adam Lynn. He's okay. unsigned. Kendrick 6 4 3 double play and then the home run to dead center field to provide Washington with their only run. At the bottom of the zone just beneath ball one. And Brian Shaw is up in the Rockies bullpen. But he's on the phone. Slow Tuno. So every day folks in the uh, middle of the afternoon usually about three hours before game time buddy meets the media in the dugout. Well the other day we're at Coors Field and I'm, you and I are standing there actually we're sitting we're sitting up on the bench right next to where buddy will take his seat. And the phone's ringing in the dugout from the bullpen. Well, the phone's ringing no one in there it's not during the game so we answer it right. Uh huh. It's buddy. He's down in the bullpen watching somebody <laughs> throw a side session. He goes, I'll be right there. <laughs> Which is vintage. Classic it, yes, buddy, right? Yeah, that's classic buddy. <laughs> Tell everybody I'm coming. Uh, I'll be there. That's got to be in the Ooh. zone. Wow, that one was missed, I think, by Ben Men. Three and one. And up, is, if anything, is what Ben has missed, missed tonight. Jake McGee has now joined Brian Shaw out of the bullpen. One out. Zimmerman at first. 3-1 to Kendrick. Cargo is not going to have a play here. No, and then Buddy's reason for doing that's twofold. One, because he likes to be on time to uh -huh. everything, didn't want to hold anybody else up. And two, he, he knew it would be entertaining. <laughs> truth funny. be told, it, truth be told, it took us a couple seconds to figure out how to open that case. Well, Did I you ever mess with the phone when you no, were in the dugout? No. No, that was like, you know. Answering the principal's phone. You never did that. Yeah. Like you just walk into somebody's office and say, oh, I'll, I'll go ahead and answer that. Grab one. that. <laughs> Put your feet up on the desk. Yeah. Kendrick had to fight that one off. Let's 
He's a professional hitter, man, and has been for a long time. Professional player, period, Howie Kendrick. Angels, Dodgers. And this is weakly hit to short. Can the Rockies turn it? There's one, there's two with the strong arm of Story. Second double play. The Rockies have turned both off the bat of Howie Kendrick. And we'll go to the eighth. It's all Colorado so far. Second, got a two-run home run in the sixth. It's been a two-home run night for D.J. LeMayhew. And Mike Redman, Chris Iannetta, hugging up Chad Bettis after 94 pitches and seven uh, terrific innings. It looks like his night is done. You know what Chad has done against the National League East, Huey? Yes. He has dominated. 15 starts against the East. He's poised to win his eighth game against one loss. And... I think Chad will point to is forget his personal record. The club is 12 and 2 in those 14 games prior to tonight. Hunting 13 and 2. I think that's the bottom line too, Drew. The the team's record. Did I did I give my club a chance to go out there and win the game? Zimmerman makes the catch. Pat Valeka is retired. That'll bring up Gerardo Parra. Gerardo's two out of three tonight. Rockies to finish that seventh inning. The Kendrick double play induced by Chad. It's their 15th double play turn, which now leads the National League. Ryan McMahon has come out on deck to hit for Parra. Well, they for hit to, excuse me, to hit for Bettis. I was going to say they had been tied with San Francisco. Ended up throwing 94 pitches tonight. And Got really, misses with it, that slider, 2 0. And you think about it, Drew, it was really just that last inning. You had the 10 pitches to Ryan Zimmerman, probably six or seven to Matt Adams, another six or seven to Howie Kendrick that really escalated that. Yeah, possibility he would still be uh, looking to continue. Get that great start every night. Not going to happen. You want to get that great start though when you when you begin a road trip. And I think even more pronounced the importance of it coming off the emotion you, of yesterday. Yes. That is a hot shot at Trey Turner. Two outs. Two outs and Ryan McMahon will get an opportunity here. 
Yeah, he didn't Ryan had his first hit of the year yesterday. Yeah, and he needed that. The base hit right up the middle. So you're right, Drew. After yesterday, you didn't want to crash and just go down today. It's easy to do. You're riding that emotional roller coaster. Everybody's so high. The adrenaline's pumping through your body. And you look at this. It's a dangerous this, line. Oh, hold on a second, man. That was, you, you took the words out of my mouth. You look at this trip. You have four against Washington. Again, a team that won 97 games last year. A team that, you know, seems like every year they're winning 95. I know Murphy's not in there right now, and I understand that Adam Eaton's not in there, but they played most of the year last season without Adam Eaton also. It is a top-notch lineup, and you're facing a, a terrific arm every night. Four here, and then the Pirates surprising a lot of folks in the first couple of weeks of the season. They're playing great baseball for Clint Hurdle, so it's not an easy no. trip, and you have a chance to get off to a quick start. Pittsburgh's 9-3. and three. They each Billy was talking about earlier. They beat Washington already, to, or excuse me, uh, Chicago already today, six to one. And this is right at Trey Turner. Scott gets the Rockies in order. We'll go to the bottom of the eighth inning. Five one, Colorado. TNT Sports Net is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Low fares, no hidden fees. That's transparency. And by Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo customers get your 2 for 1 Rockies club level tickets by visiting wellsfargo.com backslash Rockies. Rockies up 5 to 1. They have out hit the Nationals 8 to 3. Ryan McDan will stay in the game, and Pat Valeka will come off the field. And Brian Shaw will be asked to get three outs here in the eighth. Shaw face Weeders, a pinch hitter, and then Michael Taylor. So the ERA for Shaw, 405. I know the Rockies have appealed one of the plays in the game where it was a awarded a hit. He ended up giving up three earned runs. The play at first base. Those are the only runs he's given up. Yeah, that's why I pointed out the 405 ERA, because that might be knocked back to 0 0. That was the play. I think Pat would tell you after the game mm -hmm. that uh, it's a play that he normally would make. It was on an Eric Hosmer ground ball. And then there was the three run home run that just kind of scraped the top of the uh, scoreboard after that. With off the two bat, outs. Uh, two outs after, uh, you know, after that uh, misplay, Hunter Renfro hit it out. Weeders takes a strike. It's two and one. Switch hitting catcher. And 
Oh. He gets chainsawed. <laughs> One out. We can, we can hear it all the way up here, 150, 200 feet away from home plate. 240-pound <laughs> man takes a swing, and it sounds like he uh, uh, just took rakes to leaves. Wow. Well, fans don't miss the action when the Chicago Cubs make their only 2018 appearance at Coors Field. That's April 20th through the 22nd. Get your tickets online at Rockies.com. This is Wilmer Defoe. Playing a lot of second base in the absence of Murphy. Tardy on his swing, 0-1. We talked about Murphy and the progress that he's making. Was out hitting early today. At three o'clock, and he also went over, took some ground balls, turned some double plays. Still wearing a brace on the knee, and that might be a case where he wears it for a while. Balls and a strike. Three and one. We know that Shaw throws that cutter. He also has to throw one of the hardest cutters in baseball. He's averaging around 93 with his cutter. There it is oh. at 92. You can understand you know, why Matt Wiener's got the bat blown up in his hands like he did. It's a late movement. And that is all over the outside corner. Wilmer Defoe just walked away. Two outs. As Brian Shaw comes all the way back and gets Defoe. That's all you can do when you take it. Just walk back. Say he got me that time. Michael Taylor 0 for 2. Fly ball to center field and a ground ball to third. Chad Bettis faced only three over the minimum in seven innings. Allowed one run, three hits, walk two, five strikeouts, two double plays behind him. And a strike. Reminiscent of that game a number of years ago in Seattle with Josh Fogg. Remember Fogger? Wow. He was done in an hour and a half. Yeah, but he gave up like two hits, and then they were erased by by double plays. He faced the minimum. But that's right. That's what I did. Twenty-seven guys in that game up in Seattle. I think it started in, in early start time, and by the time the game ended, it was still light. I talked to Fogger about that. That's one of his naturally all-time favorite sure. games. He pitched a lot of good ones in the big leagues. Little low, two and one. Eighth appearance for Brian Shaw, which is time for the National League lead in appearances. And that shouldn't come as a surprise because he's appeared in more games than any other pitcher the last five years. He's a workhorse. Two and two on Taylor. Got our attendance tonight, 24,213. Line drive, base hit to right. So with two outs, and a runner aboard Trey Turner will come up. How about Terry Francona during spring training? Asked about the prospects of Cleveland, a really good baseball club, a team that's had a lot of success. Foster just making sure his bullpen is ready to go. If they need any help here, if uh, Brian needs any help, but he was very upfront. He said. It'll be hard for us to be as good as we've been the last couple of years because we don't have Brian Shaw. 
That's the first thing he said. It wasn't about, well, maybe losing Carlos Santana and some of the offense that he brings. No, he said Brian Shaw. And, and even if he felt that, most managers would would say, but, you know, we're really comfortable with where we're going to go now. <laughs> we like, into, they'll cover it somewhere, yeah. especially, especially when you have that conversation in March. He was very candid. He said we, it, it's going to be really difficult to be quite as good because Brian Shaw now pitches for the Colorado Rockies. Think how comforting he is for Bud Black when he looks at that lineup card now and says, well, I've got option A, option B, option C. I got Brian Shaw. I got Jake McGee. I got Adam Ottavino. I've got Wade David. All these different pieces. And then when you take one of those away, like what happened to Terry Francona, it's hard. And Adam Ottavino is throwing the ball better than any guy in any bullpen on any baseball team <laughs> on the planet. planet Earth. Yeah. There's Otto. He has faced 27 hitters and he struck out 34. <laughs> Doesn't it feel that way? <laughs> Weak ground ball to second. DJ. Oh, he can play defense also. I just thought he was a slugger. Nope. 5 1. We'll go to the ninth. Brian Shaw did his thing. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Look what you signed up for, Jenny. <laughs> Time for the course light refreshing finish. DJ this evening has been something special. Home run to begin the night. And then he threw out an opposite field double. You know he's going to do one of those uh, each evening. Go to right, and then he pulled another one. This one deeper than the first. A two run. Excuse me, a two home run night for the second time in his career. And he had career best four RBIs. Sean Kelly's now on the mound for the Nationals. The fifth game for Kelly. Four innings, three hits. No walks, seven strikeouts. Why we brought Corey on this trip and left Jenny in charge with Spilly back home. She a babysitting <laughs> fee also. <laughs> She's got baby Vin. Vin's easier to handle. <laughs> Good eye. Three and one. Jake McGee is going to throw the ninth inning for the Rockies. Uh, two out of the three. Oh, excuse me. Two of the guys are right handed and Bryce Harper, the left hander. Oh. 
different body type, but you know, Tanner Roark, or she's Tanner Roark, he's going tomorrow. Uh, looking at Sean Kelly, he borrowed Jason Ward's beard in, in Maine. Ke uh, Kelly probably, what do you think, three, four inches shorter than Worth. And as I talked about a little bit ago, just four innings for Kelly, but seven strikeouts. And for a guy that doesn't throw 99, it's 92, 93 with his fastball. Good slider, though. This ball's hit well to center field way back. Taylor will have to play it off the wall. That was a great pickup, and it's another double. That, that would have been a triple. I don't know how Michael Taylor, he, you know, he's running toward the wall and sticks out the glove when it ricochets off. What a night for LeMayhew. Think about his slugging percentage right now, but Taylor just almost like a, a hockey goalie with the shot coming in, just throws his glove up, kicks out his leg, and makes a play. It makes it incredibly close at second base after that rocket of a hit from DJ. That gets up a few feet more. You're talking about a three home run night. Or if that gets by him, it's a triple possible inside the park. Chris Iannetta hits one to left field. DJ's going to tag, and he's going to go for it. And guess what? He's going to get there. Good read by DJ running on Matt Adams. Pre-pitch, pre-game preparation. Explain, former <laughs> big leaguer. Well, DJ does all of that. He knows that Matt Adams doesn't have the strongest arm. Infielder going to the outfield. He is also going back, so he knows that. The third thing is there's nobody out. So what do you do on a fly ball? You go back and tag just so you can advance on that ball. Great base running. Now Nolan a chance to drive in another run. He's pretty good at doing that. They're going to appeal. And he did not leave early. And if you're wondering, because we have the advantage, the, the first base umpire made that call because of the, the way that the umpires have to rotate. You got the second base umpire going out to see where the catch is, so the first base umpire will take a look at that trail runner to see where they kind of time it up. Good swing by Nolan. He had a double back in the fifth inning. Michael Taylor's taken a couple of uh, potential doubles from Nolan tonight. Took two shots to deep center field. Good player defensively, Michael Taylor. One and one. Twelve. Total bases tonight for DJ. Two homers, two doubles, four ribbies. Just the 25th time that a Rocky has had 12 total bases in a game. Club records 14. It's been done three times by this guy at the plate, Nolan, Larry Walker, and a guy we just saw down in Arizona, Jeff Cirillo. Jeff scouting that. Jeff had 14 total bases, huh? 2-1. Mm -hmm. two, 2-2. Two two. Nolan looking for his seventh RBI. 130 last year. Another 2 2. And Nolan pops this one up in foul ground. Weeders, I 
styles of play. So the infield will drop back. Trevor Story will come up. Who wants tacos? Fans, follow us at AT&T Sportsnet RM on Twitter to receive alerts for the Rockies taco special when the Rockies score seven runs in a game or more. Trevor had a solid homestand. Tonight, 0 for 4, three strikeouts. Tried to bunt his way on his last time up. He was thrown out by Trevor Gott. Trying to keep a streak going where he's reached in 10 consecutive games. Each of the last couple of years, won uh, two out of three here in Washington. These two teams will finish the season against one another in Denver. Yeah, September 28th through the 30th. And it was the road team last year that had the advantage. Yeah, Washington took three out of four in Denver. Two and one. Yeah, Charlie Blackman, third straight game. Not in the starting lineup, though. Says his uh, right quad is feeling much better. But he said he felt like in the next day or two he'll be back in there. You know what the guys on the bench are saying to him in a game like this? The DJ. He's getting, he's getting Wally pipped. <laughs> he lose his starting gig. He's going to lose his spot in the lineup. He'll let you run out and play center field. Right. We're going to have to drop you down, though. Actually, you know, it wouldn't matter whether you hit DJ first and Charlie second or vice versa. Still going to have great production. Uh, strikeout uh, story, and DJ is left at third base. Two homers, two doubles, three outs to go. Rockies up 5 1. Runs, two doubles, 12 total bases. Rockies winning five to one. It's been a good night. They're just looking for three more outs from Jake McGee. Hey, fans, Coors Field is available year round for special events, and most areas of the ballpark can be resolved, reserved. Call 303 Rockies for more information. A special night for DJ LeMayhew, and now Jake McGee will be asked to get outs 25, 26, and 27. Rendon, Harper, Ryan Zimmerman, seventh appearance for Jake McGee. This one inning in the San Diego series gave up a hit, earned run. That was that solo home run that he gave up. So Eric Hosmer. 
Rick Porcello in a game that was delayed by weather. The Yankees at Boston has a no hitter through six. Rendon against Chad Bettis. Like most of the Nats lineup. Not much to show. 0 for 3. Two fly outs and a pop out in the infield. Jake's got the stripes out. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, quick pitch, too. Chris Russick's got the whole club doing it. Yeah. Why not? He's, they've seen the success of it. The essence of pitching is throwing off the timing of the hitter, and that will do it. Steve Foster's okay with it. Bud Black's fine with it. I don't like those stripes that Jake is wearing. There's Chris. Well, Ian Desmond playing his first game in the Rockies uniform in center field in his return to Washington. He had a bunch of chances tonight. He can reach one very naturally to his fourth foot out. Bryce Harper lined out to left, and then Betta struck him out on all speed pitches twice on 3 2 deliveries. Jake's won the first two matchups between these two. Nice over two against Big Jake. One and one on Harper with one out. Rockies leading five to one. Knees. Harper looks away. Thought that was uh, down in the way, and it probably was. One and two. That was the reverse. <laughs> of what he just <laughs> did, the quick pitch. Uh -huh. That time he held it for a while, and it was almost uncomfortable watching up here. And then he zipped the fastball by Harper. With nobody on base. I mean, you see that with the runner at first, where you, you hold the runner, hold the runner, and then you deliver the ball. But when there's nobody on, that's the last thing you're thinking of. But I guarantee it affected him. So he had a quick pitch and a hold pitch. And a hold pitch. <laughs> the old hold pitch. <laughs> Two outs, nobody on for Ryan Zimmerman. 0 for two and a walk tonight for Zimmerman. And that cuts inside. Ball one. DJ LeMayhew tonight, an extraordinary night. One of his best offensive nights of his career. He's had a lot of great ones, right? The Rockies one out away from shaking hands. And what DJ did, this ball's hammered to center field, and it'll be a run down out there by Desmond. But DJ kind of masked where the Rockies were inefficient at times with runners in scoring position, but he was just the best player on the field tonight. Sometimes you need those guys. Great pitching performance from Chad Bettis. What a start to the road trip. The Rockies 
over the Nationals, five to one. Four ribbies, two bombs tonight for DJ LeMayhew. Five putouts for the Rockets.